Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. In this video, we will see how we can integrate uh, WebLogic with external LDAP server. Okay, we will see how we can integrate with the Oracle OID. Uh, so if you are not aware about what exactly is an LDAP server, so you can uh, consider it as an uh, identity server where your username, password, and your personal details about, about your uh, department details and all these uh, certain profile data is stored. Okay, for example, your name, first name, second name, last name, and then your username, your password, uh, your department in which you are working in, in your organization. Okay, and then related with that, there are a lot of different parameters as well. For example, your, uh, what is your ad, uh, phone number, what is your address. So all the identity information of an employee of the person is stored in the LDAP server. Okay, so by default, WebLogic come with a default LDAP server, okay, which is a file-based LDAP server. Okay, uh, where your identities are stored in uh, at a file system level, and that but that LDAP server is not capable for uh, to store large number of user base or large number of user data. Okay, so specifically when we talk about the production environment, okay, where we have multiple users in an enterprise world in an enterprise application, mm -hmm. then your external uh, then then embedded LDAP server is not able to cater that demand. Okay, it may slow down or it may degrade the performance of your web logic when you try to log in with the your username and password due to the uh, limitations or okay so in that case it is always recommended to have an external LDAP server that means you have to integrate your web logic with an external LDAP server where you can store all of your identity information so whenever you access any applications which is deployed in your web logic server okay so the authentication will be happen from the external LDAP server instead of your embedded LDAP server Okay, so in this video, we will see that how we can integrate our web logic with the OID, which is an LDAP server from the Oracle. Okay, so by default, if you wanted to see the current provider or, or the name of your embedded LDAP server, which I said that web logic comes with a default LDAP server provider. Okay, so for that, you can log into your admin console, then go to your security realm. Okay, you will see a default realm with name my realm. Click on the name my realm and then click on the providers tab. Inside that, you can click on the authentication tab. Okay, so by default, if your web, web logic is not integrated with any of the external LDAP server, then you will see default authenticator. Okay, along with that, you will see a default identity asserter. Okay, so this default authentication or default authenticator, okay, which is the embedded authenticator for your WebLogic server, which authenticate your username and password from the embedded LDAP server. Okay, so when we, when we will integrate OID as an external LDAP server, then on this screen, we will see a new in uh, identity uh, provider is also added. Okay, that will be get activated for the external authentications. Okay. Now, when we go for the configuration of the external LDAP server with our WebLogic server, there, then there are certain parameters are required. And it is equally important to understand all the parameters, okay? In a professional environment, there would be a possibility that there, there would be a separate security team. Those are maintaining your OID. It can be possible, but it is also possible that you are in a multiple role where you are managing end-to-end -end a customer with all of his multiple application stacks, okay? So in that case, you also should know aware about all these parameters, okay? Even you are uh, you have a different security team and you are arranging these deals for the configurations from them, you should aware about it, what exactly the configurations you are doing, okay? Instead of just copy-pasting all the contents. So the important six parameters that you need for the configuration of external LDAP server in your web logic, the first one is the OID host. Okay, that means it is the host, the DNS or the IP address of the host where your external OID server is running, or you can say your external LDAP server is running. So this is the host name. You can see the DNS or IP address of that particular host. When we go to the configuration terms, that means the when you go for the configuration in the WebLogic console, okay, then you will see all these parameters which is defined inside configuration terms. So inside the host, you have to define the IP address or DNS of the host where your OID server is running. In my case, because my LDAP OID is running on my local machine, so my value in that case is local host. Second, OID port. So each and every service run on a particular port. Similarly, OID or LDAP server is also run on a particular port. The default port for OID is 3060 and in my local machine, it is running on 3060 port. So the value of port, there is a smelling mistake is there. It should be P-O-R-T port, okay? So wherever you have this configuration port, you have to specify the port number of your OID. In my case, it is default 3060, which is the default port of your OID. Third parameter is their principle. So this principle is the 
complete username of your uh, admin uh, uh, account okay which is there in your oid okay so just like you have an admin user in your uh, webblogic server similarly you have a admin server, admin user in your uh, oid as well okay the default oid uh, the default uh, admin user in oid is with the name orcl admin okay so whenever you install the oid there is a default user is get created with admin rights the name of that is orcl admin okay but you will see that the username is specified as cn equal to orcl admin then comma cn equal to users then comma dc equal to us comma dc equal to oracle comma dc equal to com so this is the way how these users and uh, entity entries are stored in the oid so oid as i said that is the identity server where where all the personal details are get stored okay so uh, to understand it, why it is in this form is you can consider that uh, the uh, the entries in OID is stored in the tree form. Okay, what does it mean tree form? Let me explain it. For example, that uh, uh, you, for uh, your particular identity, suppose that your uh, personal record or your identity record is stored in in the OID. Okay, and you are working in the sales department, and currently you are deployed in the US. So you have multiple. Uh, uh, people's employees are working in a sales department, some of them in US, some of them in, in India, some of them in di some different countries, right? But the department is sales, right? So when we go for the configurations or for storing the username and password in the OID, we stored it in a hierarchy form, okay? That means I would create a, 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 a folder or, or a directory tree with the name of sales. I would create a, another uh, inside that I will create a folder US because I know that the sales department is sales and then there are multiple users inside the sales. So I will create multiple folders like US, India and some different countries inside the sales. Okay. And then in that particular folder or you can say in that particular country that I have folder that I have created with that name, I will create the user. Right. So there would be a complete chain of path in that case. OK, so the, the, the username, the base user, which is your username, suppose that is uh, Digitalk in my case, it will be defined as CN equal to Digitalk. OK, and then CN equal to users equal to US Oracle dot com. So this is the base 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 directory structure for your all the users. OK, so when you go to OID, which I'm going to show you on the next screen, and then you will get a clarity on that one. OK, a default base or the default uh, user base is created with with the name CN equal to users and then rest is depend on your uh, configurations that you have done at the time of installation. Okay, so in my case, DC equal to US, DC equal to Oracle, DC equal to COM. So this is, I have created a real name when I have installed my OID. Okay, so this is a particularly a customized things which you can configure at the time of uh, installation of OID. So what I'm trying to tell you is that how the username is get stored in OID and what is the format of that username you will get for from the uh, from the security team when you go for the configuration of the external LDAP server okay and this will be stored inside the principal so the configuration term is the principal uh, and then you have credentials for that means that what is the password for this particular user and then a user base and group base so as i said in oid all the users are get stored inside a particular common group, which is a CN equal to users. And then the rest entry is based on the real that you have defined during the installation. Similarly, you have a group based DN for that again, CN equal to groups. This would be the common. Okay. And then rest is based on the configuration of the real that you have given at the time of installation. So these are the parameters that you need when you go for the configuration of the external LDAP server. Okay. Now this is the screenshot of my OID server. Okay, and this will give you a clarity how the, what I was explaining is that how the user get stored in your OID in the directory tree. Okay, so here you can see that on the left hand side inside the root, okay, there is a chain called DC equal to com, DC equal to Oracle, DC equal to US. So this is the uh, realm, uh, the, the main realm for all of your user and group bases. Okay, and this is defined when we install the OID. It could be possible that when you are installing your OID, then you can give this base even as uh, your company.com. So in that case, the topmost entry will be DC equal to com, and then second entry DC equal to would be your company name because you have given the real MS your company.com. Okay. Inside that, it will create different folders, and the common folder would be CN equal to groups and CN equal to users. Okay. So all the users will be defined inside the users, and all the corresponding groups will be defined inside the groups. Right. So in that case, how the username will be derived. Okay. So suppose that I have created a user with name ORCL admin, or you can say about, I have created another user, which you can see on the screen is Digitalk inside users. Okay, so what is the complete 
base uh, URL for uh, for login to that particular user is, uh, if I take the uh, the case of Digitalk, then it would be CN equal to Digitalk, okay, and then CN equal to users, then DC equal to US, DC equal to Oracle, and DC equal to COM. And this is how the username gets formed in the OID whenever we create any user. It is completely depend on the which domain tree it belongs, okay. Now, to, to configure your external OID, you have to again go back to your admin console, click on security realigns, and then click on provider tab. Inside provider, I show you that you have a default uh, authenticator provider as of now, okay? Inside the authentication tab, then click on new. Once you will click on new, it will ask you for a name. Just give the OID provider because I'm uh, integrating with the OID. So I have given the name as OID provider. And if you are integrating with some other external uh, LDAP provider, then give the name according to that, okay? And then type because I'm integrating it with the Oracle uh, Identity Server, I uh, OID, okay? Internet Directory, okay? So for that, I have selected Oracle Internet Directory Authenticator, okay? So once you will click on this box, then you will see a lot of LDAP, supported LDAP servers. Okay, by which you can do the integration of your WebLogic server. Now you will, once you will save on this one, okay, you will see that our default uh, uh, OID authentication provider is created, OID provided, right? So now your OID uh, as a provider is created, but now we have to specify the details of the OID server, where it will go to contact the uh, LDAP server, okay? After that, click on the OID provider that you have created, which is OID provider in my case, click on this one, Okay, then click on configurations and then click on provider specific tab. Okay, once you will click on that one, then you have to enter the detail that we have collected, which we have discussed some time back. Okay, the first one is the host name of your OID server where it is running. In my case, it is on my local host, so I have given the local host. What is the port of your OID? In my case, it is 3060. What is the principal? So, principal again, as I said, this is the admin user of your or admin account of your OID server. Okay, which you will get from the security team. Or if you are managing that, you are aware about this one, what exactly it is. Okay, and then you have a corresponding credentials, password for this particular principal or user. Then you have to define a user base DN. Okay, which is starting with the CN equal to users and we have discussed just some, some time back. So after that, there is a last parameter that you need to enter is the group, group base DN. Okay, so group based DN is again just is it is it is corresponding to your user as we have discussed some time back that you have uh, uh, you have a user base called CN equal to users and then similarly you have a group based DN for groups that is called CN equal to groups. Okay, so these are the six important details that we have collected in, and discussed in the few previous slides. Okay, which you need to be entered and then click on save. Okay, in case any of your details is wrong there, maybe uh, you have given the wrong host name, wrong port or wrong username, password, group or user base DN, then you will see a security prompt that this is not, you have some problem with your credentials that you have provided and then you will see an error message. Okay, and once everything is good, then you will see that all changes have been activated and one item must be restarted. So once it is done, you have to restart your domain, okay? So I would recommend once the configuration is done, you can come restart your complete domain. That means all of your managed servers and your, including your admin server. Okay, once it is restarted, again, go back to my realms, click on my realms, the name of your realm, which is my realm here, then click on users and groups, and then users. Now here you can see that all the users which is there in LDAP server will be reflected here as well. Okay, so in my case, the Digitalk user in my LDAP server, it is not in my WebLogic server. Okay, similarly, OID admin server is in my OID provider. Okay, similarly, OACL admin is in my OID provider. That means, once the integration is successful, you will see that all the users, those were created in the LDAP server, will get reflected on your WebLogic server screen. Okay, and this is how we can create the username in, in, in your uh, WebLogic, in your OID server. Okay, and this we are going to create in, uh, discuss in, in a bit later, okay, uh, in detail, how we can create a user in the OID, okay. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.